January 25th, 2020. And as per always, we have the legend himself, Mr. Harjani. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Go I'm ahead. good. We got such a late start. It is so. Yeah. It is Saturday it's and very night. night live. But we are going to still do this thing and we're going to yeah. enjoy it. So, yeah. So, how was your week? I know you finished this Spear of the Novel yes. by Michel Crotten. Michel Crotten. Michel Crotten. Michael Crichton, yes. Uh, uh, he is no uh, longer with us in the world of the living, but uh, okay. yes, it was a fantastic book. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically, the sphere is real, but you're going to read it, so you get yeah. to find out about it. Okay. But yeah, it was a very interesting book, um, and then I've started the next book, next sci-fi book, um, Isaac Asimov book that I'm going to go through with my dad and my cousin, uh, but like kind of the first book club I've really ever done, I would say. So okay. yeah, that should be a lot of fun, and already like this new science fiction book is kind of similar in a lot of ways to... I guess that book, in the sense that it's very uh, going kind of into another world and experiencing yeah. very, very yeah. not Earth-like things. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. How about you? How was your week? Mm. My week was good. My week was all into building something like a, a video chat application. But just for the sake of understanding how Web RTC works, uh, you were talking about the other book. <coughs> I had like a question, okay. So why do you think people make book clubs? Like what is the point? Like you have no novels and they have like a story, but then what do you gain from reading? Maybe you get better at your um, reading skills maybe. But Yeah, I don't think it's that. I think most people want yes. to so there's, you know, reading a book has a certain level of enjoyment and I love reading. Okay. But I think the experience of going through the experience with other people is what people like about a book club. Same thing with the movie, right? Like, it's one thing to watch a movie alone, and okay. you can enjoy watching a movie, but why is why do movie theaters exist, right? Um, it's because, like, watching, experiencing something with other people, with your friends or with others, adds, like, an element of enjoyment and an element of excitement, I guess, to I the see. experience. So I feel like that's the reason that... So people, when you finish reading a book, you talk about it? Fun parts? Yeah, and usually you do it with people who like the same kind of thing, right? So... Huh. People who like tech books or people who like, you know, um, certain kinds Novels. of, like, self-help books or something. Oh, like Maybe people have the same issues and they like to identify with each other because they have the same mental problems or whatever. So they, maybe they would talk about, talk about what they, yeah. Okay. Or so, something like that, right? Or oh. theological books, right? Like, I read theological books as well. So maybe I go in church with a couple of other people that yeah. are inter interested in the same area of theology as me. And then we talk about... Mm -hmm the differences in theology in that area or something, for example, right? But, and I can get a lot out of a book on my own, but if you discuss it with other people and you hear what they got out of it, yeah. it's not going to be the same as you because everyone's different. So I think that's the reason book clubs are, yeah. Useful. useful. You learn more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. You don't, yeah, you can learn more too, but I think it's about the experience, going through the journey with someone else. So, yeah, so <clears throat> to answer your actual question about my week, um, yeah, so I kind of put a halt on one app that I've been developing that I showed you. Yeah. I'm kind of going into development on another app. Um, so this has been kind of a cool experience because I'm having to dig into like Laravel more to understand how the back end's dealing with the data. So how been, it uh, works with your application? But yeah. isn't, uh, don't you just like send API calls and you get the response and you display it on your application? Yeah, pretty much. So, but yeah. I also have an issue to do in with the back end? in the back end. So I'm still setting, kind of having to set up the environment. So but you work with your fellow developers who are working in the Laravel project. So you debug the problems they have like together. Kind of, yeah. So okay. we're also kind of still setting up my environment, which is kind of annoying. Nice. We're using a Homestead, Laravel Homestead, to uh, for our back end. So I'm trying to run the app locally so that I can test it with uh, the spreadsheets we use. So, yeah, I, f I definitely have to get the app running locally before I can actually make much progress. But okay. it's been a good learning experience because eventually, I'm soon I'm going to have to get the app running locally on my system. And then I'll be able to learn more quickly about Laravel also. So, yeah, it'll be good. Uh, so, yeah, um, what did you listen to this week in terms of anything, podcasts or music or something? Mm. <coughs> so I was just li listening to, like... Uh, Scottish music, like uh, on my 
on my phone if i just search for irish music or something i'll get nice flute music and i realize that if you search if you search for any song that you like but you just put nightcore in front of it you find like a very good version of the song it's like a it could be like a female cover or something of a male version of a song and it gets very good so <coughs> i heard like uh, you can even song pass, uh, find like popular songs like uh, you can find for my merry christmas or something like that but you can find for like pop songs so it's really fun so if you can if you want to do that so doing so i found like uh, some scottish songs and even uh, for uh, one direction songs or something like that if you <coughs> like some bands so you can just uh, search like that and apart from that there's like this uh, if i'm focusing on my code or if i'm focusing on something if i want to read something and i don't want to listen to my uh, to any disturbance <coughs> and my headphones are not like voice cancelling or something i just search for this black uh, black white noise on youtube and there's this one uh, this one video that is like i think 10 hours or something so you can just play and it's just the white noise is there in that like continuous uh, p or something like that like there's one <laughs> one strange sound that keeps going it's like fan like very loud fan uh, it just constantly goes so when you listen to that initially you won't be used to it but after listening to it like 10 minutes or 15 minutes your brain just gets uh, so used to it that you don't even realize it's there and then you think like there's no sound around you and so you can focus easily the thing is after focusing for i think uh, human brains allow you to focus for 26 minutes or something straight after that you automatically change your focus to something that is not what you were doing so if you do that uh, then usually if you're listening to white noise you feel sleepy <laughs> so it'll be like you're focusing con- uh, like very uh, deeply and then you feel sleepy like anything then when you you'll be like you'll shake your head or something and then you'll get back to your thing so it's like that it's sleep watch sleep watch and uh, the world just ends there so this it's very uh, nice if you're into coding like if you have something monotonous to do if you have some code that you're writing uh, that you don't need to think too much about it then that is a good thing if you want to read something then it's a good thing so yeah you could check that out it's just free so yeah cool. that's what i found out this week cool yeah so i'm thinking like uh, i have like uh, so i was working on a web rtc project and i have like two nintendo switches so one of them has been jailbroken so you can basically access android on it but the other one is just like a plain switch os so with web rtc i'm able to access to uh, any two devices uh, using just the chrome chrome browser and just the local host user so now i'm just testing if i can do it with um, the app i created last week for app for web uh, web audio web uh, web call so i'll just use that and try to make it work with my switch so that will be a fun project uh apart from that i think that is what's going on in my mind apart from that i've heard uh the skull podcast like oh you listen yeah, to yeah, it yeah. It's kind of nice. How many episodes did you listen just one? No, no, just one. Yeah. But it was <coughs> nice. Uh but I want to listen to more because they were kind of kind of interesting. And yeah. I even like the mm, you showed me uh the what is that uh Japanese uh live uh, Saturday night live Japanese yeah. edition. <laughs> J-pop America oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so funny. I feel like finally the roads are crossing and we're actually listening to each other's things. So uh-huh. I hadn't even heard of Rhett and Link before you oh, mentioned yeah. them like your biscuit. I didn't listen to your biscuits yet. I'll, I'll get around okay. to that ne- this next week. It's really nice. But yeah. I've been watching like almost every day cuz they post every day. Yeah, I know, I know. They, they post like... <laughs> every mythical morning, dude. Mm. Like so. They are so awesome. They work so much. Yeah, even uh, I don't know if I would say they're awesome, but like I, I, I enjoy the show. They work they record 3 uh episodes in one day or something and then they'll display it three days and then they take it you know they record two days a week but they'll record it uh, multiple sessions yeah, yeah so that's how they do it and they have like a nice uh crew that will make them uh, they give them uh story material and they'll set up the st- set and they'll give them everything so it's not that much of work for like once you get to that point then i don't think it's too much work now recently you know the linus tech tips like there's this uh, youtube channel who talks about tech stuff yeah. so this guy just uh, talked about uh, recently uh, there's a video on youtube he just talks about uh, openly about how his life is and he talks about how his uh, he has his own company that makes like uh, i think 3 uh, 3 billion or something is his turnover so 
uh, he say, talks about how his family is now even if he dies tomorrow then he his family ne- his wife doesn't need to work a single day uh, to earn money for their family uh, so yeah i was just listening to that stuff he he it's like a podcast he's talking about for 45 minutes about like uh, his life and then he's talking about like this person who has uh, this boy little boy who has like uh, uh, cancer and he has uh, he likes Linus Tech Tips so he just applied for Make-A-Wish Foundation so he can see that person or something he can just make a video so he was talking about how he made <laughs> how this guy who has this uh, he's so weak with cancer he builds his own system and uh, he could barely build it because he's so weak because of cancer uh, but he still manages to build it and then he games on the system so yeah kind what's of his name again what? Linus Linus Tech Tips Tech that's tips. the oh, okay. that's the YouTube channel and his name is Linus Sebastian okay cool person yeah <coughs> so awesome. I was listening to that <coughs> yeah apart from that I uh, uh, you want to come up with something uh, so I was thinking like uh, what, do, what would you think this would mean uh okay so i was just thinking like uh, how you can uh, understand like some something so uh, someone's you, how this little guy who cannot like for us it's nothing like you can just get a system and uh, build it yourself and just you know uh, game on that it's not big deal for, but for him it's like his entire life like he all, that's all he wants to do before he dies you know it's uh, what about you? Did you listen to something that changed your life, or you felt something like you resonated with you maybe this week? Uh, not really anything that resonated with <clears> me, <throat> but I've been listening to like yeah. I guess like the consistent ones I'm listening to now are like the journal, so it's like kind of like the Wall Street Journal. Okay. Uh, recaps of like most important news. So I one see. thing was a huge dam that broke. So yeah, they always cover the biggest news, and uh, yeah, apparently like 270 people died in this dam breaking in Brazil, like oh, t- wow. today. That's sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so many people, and <clears throat> this is just a huge disaster. So that was a big big thing. Some of the other common uh, things are kind of the speculation surrounding like the future of Tesla. So there's oh, like a really? big uh, <clears throat> rift right now on people yeah. who are like there's like kind of two big groups forming like people who are expecting Tesla to, to kind of crumble and not last long term okay. and the people that are so there's like the bears um ah, and, I see for stock, stock. I yeah for the yeah. stock so there's like it's like a huge mm. topic as well and mm. like because Tesla's doing well but they're not yeah. like their stocks doing well but as a company I feel like they're like uh, Elon Musk continually is missing deadlines in terms of like selling as many cars as yeah. he says he's going to sell mm. and you know is it really gonna be sustainable like the, okay. the, the in my opinion i don't think the products that he's putting out are really that sustainable um in the as, as it currently stands and where <laughs> most people's thinking is right now but there's a, there's potential but is it actually going to perform against ford in the short term to keep the company alive you know but i so. think uh, if you think about electric cars and if you think about luxury like cars that look good in electric market basically i just see tesla there's I don't see many competitors right now in that uh, sector. Also, I love Tesla like anything. I was crazy about Tesla uh, Model 3. I am still crazy about that car. Uh, it's just like fifty, forty, six thousand dollars in in the in Japan market. So yeah, maybe someday. Who knows? But I love Tesla Roadster also, but it's too expensive. Now last week, like uh, there was this uh, Corona virus. You know, it orig- originated in China, <coughs> and now it's spreading to Japan. And my my roommate constantly like pesters me like, you have it, check it who get a check I'm like, I don't have this virus why I don't even have fever what do you mean so yeah you heard about it like this new virus uh no oh ah, okay it, it's very dangerous it seems and it's all over the CNBC and you can just check it out okay oh uh, yeah <coughs> yeah I think I heard about that yeah so anything new uh about uh with work or something um so yeah I would say this, like, new project is kind of annoying, actually, because I, mm. like, really liked where the, the other app was going. Okay. And I was having issues displaying, like, the contents of a page within the tab. Because uh, I think you noticed in my app that I had, yeah. like, that button open page. Yeah. But I couldn't get the contents of the page to just Load. display in there. Yeah. It and took you can, time for it And you can do it with an iframe, mm. but, like, that's not a good way to do it because there's a header always sent. I see. Um, in a response in Cordova, or at least in Ionic, like mm. it doesn't display very well. Okay. Um, the iframe gets like rejected. 
in the response from like the uh, the website that you're trying to display because it sends back a header that doesn't play well with that with the uh, right now <coughs> how does it sh- uh, show your footer does it fetch it from the internet somehow yeah so um yeah so from our api mm. we have like a, a bit of data that okay. that um we can configure uh this data object and then in that data, uh yeah in laravel okay. sends back the from the database and basically that config object um you can also limit the number of tabs okay so you can set like one tab there could just be home Oh. So if that were I to see. happen in my app when you open it, like literally mm. there would just be one tab on okay. the bottom. But you can specify any number in any order of the tabs. Okay. So that's pretty cool. It's like dynamic in that way. So yeah, it basically like loads the tab information on Ionic based on the API information that it mm. gets from the database. Nice. So yeah, you can configure that. And then of course the, ta- the routing still works because the routing module just specifies by the name. So okay. it'll just load the information for that tab based on like the informa- the tab routing information. So yeah, it's, it's mm-hmm. cool because it's like looking kind of decent, right, with the images. Yeah, that but they're the using. the problem is uh, the delay between opening the app and getting the foot footer loaded is kind of mm, hit or miss. So do you think? Depends on the. That's your way of saying it's bad. <laughs> yeah, that is bad <laughs> if the customer doesn't have proper internet. If he doesn't need internet, if it's like a news application that's going to have some data stored on it. So even if it's offline, you can see the stored data. But if it can, if he, the guy opens the application and even if uh, he has it loaded or something, and if he still has to load it again, that's not a good uh, user experience, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so you can maybe. See I'm that. still not exactly sure how the app's going to be used, <coughs> and that should be very that should be very clear to me based yeah. on the. Future. As it as it develops, it will it'll get better. Like you know, you'll get a. Uh, there's one round in every uh, app development that user checks, and you can just get the feedback. So maybe after that you can just improve as it goes. Just a uh, development process, maybe. Yeah. Mm. But anyway, uh, like I think it looks a lot better now. A lot of progress, yeah, yeah, but then I've really but then I've had to halt on that and like do something else that I don't understand. So yeah. while it's annoying because I have to learn something new, I feel like learning something new is always good for your career. Yeah. Because then you have more skills, more tools mm-hmm. in the tool belt, and that's always important. Like yeah. I think, because um, I'm really strong in Ionic right now. Yes. That's like my thing. I'm also learning Jekyll just because I like my uh, my uh, website yeah. for like the static, static generator. Website. Yeah. Mm. But you know, like basically this other app is only Cordova. Like he's not using Ionic, but he's using a lot of jQuery within the UI. Okay. Um, and he's just Cordova, so I'm getting like pure C- Cordova experience, I guess. And then of wow. course with like the Laravel, I think that's like a pretty good framework to know. Yeah, but it's like an entirely uh, different beast itself. It's in PHP and it has errors that that uh, so like initially when I started and I had my younger brother was coding in Laravel to make his website it gave him errors that he couldn't do it so he gave it to me and then I sat for many hours just debugging it like uh, how to do this how to then in the end I just had to tell him like just just switch to Django because I'm used to it and it's just easier in Python to debug stuff just in general but I think if you're used to it I think Laravel is not that bad but initially learning curve is something because like I'm a backend developer, so you know, it's just switching between things. It gets kind of annoying sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So that then apart from that, I'm just like thinking like mm, uh, you have Raspberry Pi, and I'll be getting one soon, hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I don't know when. Yeah, you're such like a mo- more hacker type <coughs> than me, honestly. Like I get yeah. these things. <coughs> you're you're a tinkerer. You like yes. to tinker. I, I like. <coughs> I have the skill. Yeah. <clears throat> but I don't like to tinker that much, you know. Oh, I see. Like I like to just get something that works and like make your you're, own you're, stuff. You're a hack. You're a hacking <laughs> human. Yeah, you yeah. like to hack stuff. I like to constantly <coughs> fix something. That is the thing. Yeah. Nothing is perfect. I if I get a phone, it's never perfect. I need to change the firmware or do something to it to make it better. Yeah. That's what my brain always goes. And I think like as programmers, it's very important to be a problem solver. Which yeah. I would say you're probably more of a problem solver mm-hmm. than me overall because. I don't know. I don't My think, brain I don't think it, to that. I don't think anyone loves problems, but like yeah. at the same time, you know, you have to get your feet, you have to get your feet wet, mm-hmm. you know, and dirty, yeah. and at some point, right? And mm-hmm. so dealing with problems is never fun, but like it's I something that you have to. I think in any project, like the setting up part, and like you will face nothing ev- ever works. Like yeah. if it ever worked like easily, you wouldn't have like developers and programmers getting paid so much yeah like, exactly that's <laughs> yeah, why yeah because you find so many problems all the time and that's why those youtube channels that yeah. explain stuff well mm, like they yes. get so millions many. of you like yeah. you get hundreds of thousands mm. of views like Pr- brad traversy do you know that guy yeah 
like he just like breaks down like how to like authenticate <laughs> persist authentication state on view with okay. firebase right and like just it's only like a few lines of code right yeah but it's like if you, you don't know how to do that like if you can walk through in 40 45 minutes how to build up like a complete app full like a full stack app okay and explain in it well in view mm, or okay. react or something right yeah like it's not easy you have to do your research and like mm. i want to launch my own individual youtube channel to do this soon and you cannot uh, have your app crashing when you're developing again and again so your viewers see that again and again yeah like, like you, you need have to, to be to prepared you have to be yeah, very yeah. prepared and you have to have a very concise and helpful but it video. shouldn't be also like uh, you're just <coughs> teaching it very uh, streamlined way and uh, because in between users will make some mistakes and they will find errors so you know some sometimes i've seen one youtube video like uh, not youtube like on e cloud guru i was just watching some uh, aws video and you, these uh, dev- uh, the, they will just like go and start coding something and they'll be like oh uh, i failed at this there's some error now this is how i solve it so if they keep stumbling when they do it like that's a good thing but if it, they keep failing to do some simple stuff uh, i don't think many users fail to do that so yeah. i think yeah they should keep a good balance between that yeah. when they make that videos yeah and i mean even me like i want so now we're going to talk a bit more on the youtube video aspect and go into more into japan and into food that we ate and whatnot so please Thank enjoy you. our next segment Yeah, Ahmed uh, Hajiri is doing his class. I really support him because he, you know, I don't know, like, the situation, but his YouTube channel has under, <laughs> under a n- number of subscribers. Okay. Like, he has, like, what? Not very many. Okay. And his tutorial is, like, so good. Like, 13 parts. What is his uh, uh, YouTube channel name? Uh, Clast. C-L-A-S-S-S-E-D. Three S's, so yeah. Huge shout out to uh, you, Ahmed, if you ever <laughs> listen to this. But like, really cool stuff, okay. like uh, GraphQL. You know, like yeah, Facebook's yeah. GraphQL mm-hmm. and like uh, Apollo JS. Okay. Like, I went through some of this stuff. It's like really pretty new stuff, but it is stuff that'll that's will be around, you know, for a long time. Would you call yourself like a JS guy, the guy who handles everything? I've definitely JS. become yeah. like a JavaScript. <laughs> okay, because you talk about so many frameworks in JavaScript. <clears throat> yeah yeah i think i'm just like passionate about like web okay apps. front end yeah i think design like okay. 66% and then 33 is like back end developing something that like is works like has functionality <laughs> that's complete okay. it's not just like a website right yeah, like yeah. it has like functionality mm. does like some transactions meets, meets some end yeah yeah so like you know <clears throat> i'm i want to be full stack i want to be good at everything yeah. i want to be able to do the whole thing But yeah. But I think nobody is 100%. <coughs> but know. that's the reason I want to go into video games more is okay. that I do love like design and like yeah. making something that like looks cool. Okay. At the end of the day, I don't think people like want to just like be on some boring website. They want to like look at something that looks good and mm. like while they have to deal with the interface for hours or something, right? Like it's important for them to like deal with something that's like kind of fun like like looks kind of nice. That's why Bootstrap is like so like popular. Uh, yeah. yeah, monumental, right? Is like It brought like these really old, terrible-looking components, and you have some stuff that looks decent, right? So, anyway, yeah, I definitely like um, developing stuff that can quickly get users, and people mm-hmm. are using it. Like this app already, yeah, it's gonna go out okay. to the App Store, right? Mm-hmm. It's gonna go out to both platforms. People are gonna use it, and I think it looks pretty good okay. overall. And like Ion pla- platforms, like Ionic, allow you to build something that looks so good so quickly. Mm-hmm. That goes to both platforms. So, yeah. But I think uh, the applications you build with Ionic is very different compared. If you check the app built in Android and versus the one in iOS, you know because uh, the uh, objects that your uh, uh, what is that Xcode project uh, like this uh, presents to you as compared to Android Studio, like the objects look very different, and they look a lot more polished in iOS platform. So if you compare, if you just see the top t- title bar, for example. on android it's just like a one uh, bar which uh, i think uh, with a single color and if you see it on ios it looks like a lot uh, it's white and black maybe and it looks a lot more how do i say smooth and clean clean mm-hmm. on so i think uh, those little things that ios platform does for the users and developers just makes things work and look better in general yeah oh, sorry but the, even though i uh, ionic is a cross platform uh, Apple has this, you know, quirks when it comes to design anyways. Yeah. yeah. You mean like Ionic specifically mm. or just <coughs> iOS? No, any apps if you develop even if it's cross platform when you migrate it to 
your X code in your iOS app, you will see the difference when you in the Android app and your uh, iOS platform app, like iOS app, Android, uh, what is that? iPhone app. If you compare the outcomes of both, they will have differences because of the pre-existing objects. Because the Ionic app basically just had like, a, let's say you had a text area and when it converts to the iOS object, that object is completely different from the one in your Android platform. And it diff it looks different and it feels different. Yeah, and that's the, the power <laughs> of Ionic, I think, yeah. right? Is that you get things that look so good on both platforms yeah, it just with works one code because, base. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's amazing. easy for the developer. I love Ionic. Huge plug for Ionic too. Huge plug to Simon Grimm. I think I already gave him a shout out before, but that dude okay. has helped me almost single handedly like learn a lot of the quirks and a lot of like the setup of Angular. Okay. Back end uh, of Ionic, yeah. So. So he's like a colleague, a developer. No, he's just a freelance German guy. Okay. <clears throat> that um, as of you know, if you watch his channel, you know, like I think it's October mm -hmm. 2017. He's been like full time. Uh, self-employed uh, freelance developers so okay. but he, I'm sure he probably generates a fair amount of revenue from his YouTube channel which has a lot I think about <laughs> 20 26 25k subscribers and okay. you know Does hopefully he, our he, channel gets to a lot of you know uh -huh. listeners so like a lot of those people will start like watching Simon's channel uh, yeah, yeah. as a result but they'll be very happy from yeah I mean he's been doing it for a long time mm -hmm. you know I'm kind of hopping kind of hopping on the bandwagon right yeah. in a way because Ionic you know of course is like these cross-platform mm -hmm. Frameworks are going to get even more popular because it just takes a lot of time to develop a native app. Yes. Uh, when mm -hmm. you can just develop one code base and port it with one command that and never fails. If you're already coding in JavaScript, since these cross platform applications are developed in JavaScript, maybe in UGS or React Native. React Native, yeah. So I think uh, knowing JavaScript will help you develop everything for all applications, for your mobile in general instead of learning objective c swift yeah. separately and java which is yeah. separate for android yeah and the thing is is like once you <coughs> know like a backend like aws pretty yeah. well mm -hmm. then you can just build like if you just know ionic and vue yeah you only need to know javascript and you can build an app that runs on web and both platforms of mobile that use the same backend mm -hmm. so it's like just with javascript you can build stuff that runs on every almost every device imaginable so, but I think uh, uh, I think more form-based applications are what you would develop uh, using I Ion Ionic framework. And if you want to game build games and stuff like that, then you have to go to Unity or uh, what is the other one? Three D. Unreal. Unreal, yeah. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, those That's, are definitely the two big dogs in the game game engine game industry. Engine industry. Yeah. Mm. And I think uh, Unity is just in C sharp. Yes, yeah, just C sharp. <clears throat> yeah, we need something in JS for that. You can so develop easy. you can develop yeah. games with JavaScript. How? Uh, using what? Using whatever people that develop JavaScript okay. games use. I don't I see. I've never done it myself. Maybe but. they'll make it in the browser and then, you know, get the web view. Yeah, there's all sorts of like tutorials that people mm. build. Like uh for example, I went through a React Tetris tutorial when I was first re learning React last year. Okay. And that's essentially a JavaScript game. Uh you just pull in some like U UI libraries basically. Ah, into React and yeah. you just use it. They have so. their own. Uh, React Native has its own so many libraries uh, available that you can just include. Yeah. It's kind of, it kind of feels like a cheating, but it's okay. <laughs> you it's get the things it's, done. It's never cheating. Yeah. Uh, in <laughs> fact, it's it's smart versus yeah, yeah. stupid, right? When you have mm -hmm. a customer that wants a product and what's the fastest you way to get it out? You have the components ready. Yeah. yeah. Instead of building so it yourself. It's all about just thinking smarter, than, not harder, right? So, yeah, um, yeah cause uh, I'm very interested to see like where the world's going to go in 10 years, honestly, because there's going to be a lot of people like me that can pick, yeah. you know, it only takes about a year to really, like, really pick up Ionic Framework okay. to the point of like mastery, I would say. Same okay. thing with Vue and React, like you could probably learn, like in one year you could go from zero to... Master. Almost master level, okay. yeah. You can and, build anything? You know, I, th I still think that it's important to have like yeah. a good computer science background because otherwise you're not going to really design code the right way. Okay. And you'll never build something that's robust and like you know no one's gonna buy like like a crappy you know i'm gonna keep trying mm -hmm. to release apps this year but no one's gonna really <laughs> use apps unless you like yeah. you're fulfilling a market need right and to do that you really need robust software that is developed by a team you can't just most people can't Hacky just develop apps, something yeah. Yeah. on their own that's gonna get like a lot of users right so i think you can do it but you cannot rely on just keeping it st uh, static like you have to keep upgrading it maybe 
yeah. you can do it but it will take a lot longer time to build yeah. the same output. like if i had stuck with that job app yeah. like so you saw the version yeah, that yeah. i just loaded mm-hmm. on to the iphone right yes and it, the ui is not bad i would say and definitely if um we had put it out there pushed it with our big um with my, our company has a lot of um, I guess followers or likes on the Facebook page, and if we would really, yeah. and I think they're still gonna push for what I made in view mm-hmm. to go out. Okay. Um, because they're just still developing it, but you know, if I'd stuck with that and worked and worked and debugged and went yeah. mobile and said let's do mobile, mm-hmm. um, and they had taken me full time because I was only working three days a week there, so if I was working every day, and like really focused on that and pushed that forward, I really think that it's like could is like almost rivaling Work Japan, which is like kind of a up and coming like okay. employment app for mm-hmm. Japan because there's Indeed too, but Indeed's <clears throat> interface. I mean, Indeed's process is like very bulky. I would say. Okay. Like you have to, <clears throat> you basically end up like sending like an email, and who know God knows if you're ever going to hear back from the company, right? But like mm-hmm. I like the interface where you see all of your applied for jobs yeah. without too many steps. Mm-hmm. Like indeed, just so clunky, right? Like yeah, you yeah. go. You can just <clears throat> in your app. You can just open the job description, apply it there itself, and just you know keep everything inside the application. Maybe instead of getting to another application that will handle your emails and you'll read through it and then you will send it to the application. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes a three-step process, and you're right. jumping apps. Yeah, that's right. not good. So if you can put everything in one app and just do it there, yeah. I think. And if you get results quickly, yeah. <clears throat> and a lot of these jobs too are like kind of like low-paying, like. Not mm-hmm. jobs that you know most people would want to do, but mm-hmm. but at least you get instant feedback. Like yeah. you can see, um, you can actually make an interview right away. You don't have to get approved for the interview. Mm-hmm. Like you, the the employers just post like openings. Okay. On like when they can take interviewer interviewees, mm-hmm. yeah. and you can just meet directly with like the person. Like that's how I started my job, like working at that pizza uh, restaurant. Ah, from your application. Yeah, I literally just showed up, and <laughs> like you can just go to the interview. You don't have okay. to like be approved or anything. Yeah. You just show up to the interview straight up, and you meet with the company. How do you know that there's an interview there? Um, they tell you the address and the time. Ah, uh, okay, in the application. Yeah. Oh, I see. So it's very easy. All you have to do is just set up the interview, and then you just go to the interview. Yeah. And you can pretty much like meet someone. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and already build like that relationship and maybe um again most of the jobs are not like you know really like white collar like good jobs like translator or you know programmer most of them are like restaurant jobs or something like that wow, i see but but i know, think yeah pinch, if know. a person is like in a uh, place where he doesn't have any job and he needs something for his survival you know yeah indeed does help but it's <clears throat> much more bulky and a long yeah. process whereas this could get you something quickly okay you can schedule an interview yeah it's so more quick. like ordering a pizza yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you can Good do it all thing. in within one app and not yeah. have to like it's very you know mm. it's all about the user but the relationship that the company has too with like the user uh that you the know, company would have in like your with the employers domino's app you uh, you get to see the person who's putting your pizza in the grill oh yeah <laughs> that was like something that i heard yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i so didn't actually you know can that have but something i something like that in your application where uh, your 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 CV is now going to the interview. Yeah, he's che- checking it out. It shows like the face, like yeah. it, like pulls up the camera <laughs> on the their guy? phone and like. Mm. Yeah. It'll be kind of funny if it does that. Oh, awesome. now he's uh, printing your CV out or something. It'll show. <laughs> no, it just like turns on his camera and just yeah. like, hmm, this person mm-hmm. looks good yeah. or, oh, this person <laughs> looks terrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what about <clears throat> food? Have you found something this week? Something new in Japan? Yeah, so um, yesterday, like yeah. my roommate, Chinese roommate, and I cooked like, I want to try to cook more often, and we cooked like yeah. a uh, like a vegetable dish with like udon and like nita, which is like chive, and then like a uh, leek, and like another veggie, and we just chopped it up and made a dish, so it was kind of oh. good. Okay. Was <coughs> it like a hot pot? No, uh, no, not like a hot pot, just... Um, Gre- <laughs> gravy? Gravy? No, just like um, yeah, kind of like a pot uh, in okay. a pot, just boiling. stew. Yeah, stew, kind of stew. I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you eat it with? Rice noodles. Udon noodles, yeah. Ah, so I see. it was pretty good. I need to learn cooking. But yeah, this week has mostly yeah. been Japanese Subway. <laughs> which <laughs> Where I, did you find it? Uh, there's just one really close to my office in okay. Ikebukuro. So yeah. Is it Subway or is it another name or something? Yeah, it's Subway. Okay, so um, it's just Subway. It's, it's not Japanese Subway. It's yeah. Japanese because it's more expensive than ah, the right. counter- American counterpart, I would say. Okay. So that's what makes it Japanese. <laughs> okay, how much? It's more is expensive, it? but it, it was like six hundred and sixteen yen for like mm-hmm. a uh, sandwich and a drink. Okay. 
And I like my drink. I'm going back to soda, which is like so bad. I was doing so good. <laughs> and now I love okay. soda again. I like yeah. love Pepsi, but anyway, yeah, it's like Subway. I didn't go to Matsuya this week, thank goodness. Well, I think that's the reason I'm like okay. going to Subway is because it feels healthier. Like it just Compared feels. Compared to Matsuya. Yeah, because like. I, I think uh, when I was eating at uh, Yoshinoya, I felt very healthy. Healthy, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, because it's not too much <laughs> of uh, oil or bad ingredients when you check out the ingredients itself. It's just pork. Uh, no, not in pork. I think beef uh, in barbecue sauce. And it'll be on rice, and then you have your uh, vegetables, and yeah. then you'll have your fish that is just uh, I think pan fried with little bit salt. There's nothing on it. So yeah. I think it's not that bad. <coughs> yeah. So I've plus been the also cost is not that bad also. Yeah, yeah. I've also been going to Go Go Curry like a lot. <laughs> okay. Which you is like, like curry? So Do you like curry? Yeah, I love curry, but like mm-hmm. it's like 890 yen for like a large thing, mm-hmm. and I, I really like the. Mm-hmm. Uh, hukujin suke. So like hukujin me- li- means like blessed person. So it's like kind of like a god, and then suke <laughs> is like a topping. Okay. So it's like yeah. Anyway, it's basically pretty much like mostly uh, like ginger, like pickled ginger. Yeah. Sliced up, but it, I really like that topping, and they have like these huge trays of that. So oh. I put a bunch of that on there, and then I, the reason I'm going as well is I have like these coupons for like extra mm. toppings, so you can choose like. Uh, Piman, which is like green pepper, yeah. um, a bunch of toppings, like an egg, Ooh, like wow. stuff. So I can put like the hookah jeans Do you need to there. pay separately for it? Like no. for sides? Uh, no. So it's just like mm-hmm. a couple times when I've gotten there, there's like five of these tickets and you can just okay. put toppings on. So those toppings are mostly vegetables. So it's okay. kind of healthy too. But you said eggs also, no? And an egg, yeah. yeah. So that was the first one I did. And then I did like Piman, which is green pepper. And then um, next time I'll probably do like need some veggie. Of okay. some kind, so yeah, go go curry, subway. <laughs> Unfortunately, I need to branch out a little more, but yeah. uh, yeah, so have you ever been to uh, Iso Marusui san? No, I don't even know that name. <clears throat> so, our results came out for JLPT, by oh the way, and God. your results were garbage, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know, I don't know. You got I, really... I'm very bad at Japanese, <laughs> I, I'm not able to pick it up. I tried studying so hard, but it just doesn't go inside. Oh man, yeah, I think it's like a very bad curve for me, you know, learning curve is horrible for me. Yeah, at least you're good at uh, studying for Amazon stuff, so you'll probably be better with me there. But yeah, we should definitely like try to study together a little bit. Like I could pull you for Japanese Ah, and teach you a lot, and then you could teach me probably a lot for AWS. But then I'm thinking like for this year, I'll just focus on my AWS studies. No, you should do both, man. No, I can't. There's enough. There's enough time to do anything, Uh man. No, focus and don't keep on watching stupid YouTube videos while we should be debugging (laughs) problems with our recording and thinking of ideas. So. So, uh, let's talk about some random ri- lifestyle stuff now. <laughs> like, how do you manage your life now, basically? Like, every day we code and then what next? Like, how do we manage via work type and stuff like that? Let's talk about it. Like, when I'm thinking, like, I, just can, I can just focus on one thing. And then I need to do something that is relaxing and fun. And then I, I can go get back to study. Yeah. So, if I manage that, on a regular work day, I get like two hours maybe in the morning if I get up early. But other than that, at night, I don't think I can focus that much because at work, I'm just coding and, you know, my brain is already utilized. Yeah. So I can focus on one thing. So I'm thinking, like, if I have that free time, I will focus on AWS this year. <laughs> and then next year, I'll focus on Japanese completely. I think it's all about, like, determination, right? Like, at yes. the end of the day, right, like, yes, we need balance. We need okay. to, like, relax and we need yeah. to work. Mm-hmm. And if yes. you don't relax enough and you don't like you take working. it easy enough, then yeah. Your so, brain so I'm also reading another book now, which is called mm-hmm. The Magic of Thinking Big. I'm about halfway through now, okay. but it's a really good book. And yeah. um, one of the, the uh, kind of ideas yeah. is that like what you do from six to nine mm-hmm. determines your nine to six, right? So like what you do outside of like your working time has a very direct impact on what your work is. Okay. So, like, if you use your nine to six and just like don't do anything, and mm-hmm. you're just like, like so relaxing, see, doing see, nothing. I'm telling you, this this is how it uh, it makes up. Like, I think. Uh, so your job requires you to know Japanese because your Slack is just in Japanese, right? Because uh, for my work, I don't need that. But for my work, on the contrary, I need uh, all the AWS knowledge. So as the new services come along, I can make projects using those. So. For me currently, I don't think I need Japanese that much. That's why my brain doesn't. Yeah, I see, just don't feel. Yeah. yeah, you need the, the motivation. Need, you need yeah. that fight. You need that fight yeah. or flight requirement, uh-huh. right? Yes. 
Like, for me, if I don't, like, really snap up and, like, yeah. get... Definitely. Because, like, okay, I was closer to passing N2 than you were to passing N4, right? I, I, yeah. But, like, unless I get actual N2, like, proficiency, like, in the next, like, three or four weeks... Yes. Like, I'm not so sure how, like, secure my job is, okay. like, all the time. Yeah. Like, I think it's good because my programming ability is fine and I'm okay. doing well. But, like, my Japanese is a huge limitation, even okay. with my ability now. It's, yeah. like, very, very limiting. Okay. Um, because I still can't understand the level that I need to, to really perform, like... How do you know that you need that much for your work? Do, do they ask you for it? Or is it, like, in meetings they ask you... To it's more that I want it. Ah, because I, I think I'm meeting requirements, I think it's fine. Yeah. But for me, I want to understand. I, I want to mm. be there, and I want to, like, just be on the same page as everyone. Yeah. And, like, I want it. Okay. So And I also kind of need it, too. Yeah. But I also want it. So, like, to get there, I've got to really run. Okay. And, you know, you. I think you have to put yourself in those environments sometimes, like, for your goals, right? So, yeah. like... If you want to, like, work for Amazon, right? Like, you need mm -hmm. to, like, have probably, like, four or five at least certifications, right? And you have to, like, show that you're, like... Do you even need JLPT for that? To work In for Japan. Amazon? Yeah, Amazon Japan. W why? And th I think uh, JLPT N3 is minimum requirement. Because so you can speak to the clients and you can speak to the people inside, maybe? It probably depends on your role, right? If you're yeah, just a developer, yes, you yes. still need N3? or? Uh, uh, for a person who works in the data center, they don't need it. I think so. Mm. But you still need it. Anyways, if you're living in Japan. But I think uh, for now, for me, I don't need it. Like For this year, I'm, I'm focusing just on Amazon AWS certifications because I see like around me and there are like people who have like professional certifications. I want to be so someone like who... So I think... That, who is that good? <coughs> my loving feedback yeah. to you yes. is that you're telling me that you want to live in Tokyo at least yes. like two more years. No, I want to live here for as long as I can. Okay, so that's probably maybe more than Infinity. that. Infinity, yeah. So it's, it's I think the yeah. sooner that you like really mm -hmm. get your Japanese proficiency to yeah. be like way better than it is right now, okay, that's like almost the priority because it's going to become a huge limiting factor for you. Like your job right now, it's like yeah. about my my ballpark maybe. Okay. But like I'm not where I want to be in my career. Yeah. So like I have like a little bit of regret about like not really pushing more of the tech in the past. Okay. But I'm pushing that way now. Yeah. But your limitation is not your programming really. Yes. Your limitation living here is going to be the language. So I'd say for you, make it at least half and half. Don't focus so much on AWS. Okay. Because clearly your job's going well. Like you're you've gotten off like um, more than one year, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, you're like, your job is very stable, I'd say, in terms yes. of, like, it would be is. very hard for them to fire you. Yeah. So, fo now that you have that kind of stability there, like, focus on Japanese because that's what's going to launch your life in okay. general, right? If you want to live here. You yeah. have to decide about if you want to be here long term. I'm pretty much sold on that I want to be here long term as well. So, that's kind of where I'm setting my focus. But, like, I would say since it seems like there's a good chance you want to be here long yeah, term, yeah. I think focusing on Japanese is probably wise. But, again, you know, <laughs> I think you need to put yourself in, like, a... Do or die. I want it, yeah, do yeah. or die situation. Like, yeah. just because your job's secure, don't, like, yeah. get comfortable. Like, mm -hmm. once I get to the one-year mark here, yeah. like, I like this company and I appreciate them, but, like, I think probably once I get to the one-year one and mm -hmm. some, I'm going to really want a, a pay hike if I okay. haven't gotten much. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, do you really want to get into financial, like, freedom Okay. enough? So, hmm. I understand yeah. what you say. Let's see. Let's think about that. And maybe I'll execute as the time comes. Yeah. Mm. So I think definitely <laughs> we should encourage each other in, like, the weakness areas. Like, uh, yeah. I want to, like, try to t get certified for the AWS by, like, speaking out your goals concretely is an important thing. Mm -hmm. So I would say, like, getting my certification by March, like, yeah. by the end of February for the... Okay. Um, associate develop uh, associate solutions architect. Solutions Are you going architect? to try that? If you do that, I'll take the next exam with you. I, I'm okay with that. Uh, so like solutions architect is easier, and then the developer, developer associate is, is yeah. a bit harder. Right? Yeah, you have a little <coughs> bit more stuff in that. Yeah. So I think I still need to. I think it'd be, be good to start maybe with the solutions architect one. So, of course, it is better. So by March, I want to yeah. have that, and then like the problem is you you might be done with developer by then. I'll be done with you. If you're taking it in February, maybe I'll take it with you that time. Yeah. So I speaking out my goal, I will uh, at least yeah. like register and take it. Okay. By March, mm. the certified. I think we can just apply associate. it right now also. Yeah. You can just go take it. You know, you can just pay it now and take it in the March, and you can do it right now if you want. But you can take it then also. Yeah. It's okay. So we're winding down. 
Thanks for tuning in. Uh, yeah. I want to try to add this to more platforms as well, just so that we can get our word out a little more. So maybe Stitcher. What is uh, Stitcher? I don't even know. What you don't know Stitcher, man? <laughs> you can find us on Stitcher. We should make an Instagram maybe too. Johnny okay. Homie Show Instagram. So yeah. catch us on Instagram. I'm going to speak that out in advance. <laughs> so catch us on all the places that you can find all of your, your fun stuff. Uh, so catch us on Stitcher, wherever you listen. Uh, let's YouTube. get it on Apple Podcasts too soon. Yeah. So catch us where you can. And we'll be bringing you fresh and new content every single yeah, week. Yeah, and leave comments if you want in YouTube or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah check YouTube too. Just Johnny <laughs> Nomi Show on YouTube. Yeah. We're going to keep on uploading on YouTube. So, yeah, please give us feedback. Please yes. hear what you want to hear about Japan, what you want to hear about tech, and how we can be more funny too because <laughs> we want to be funny, yeah, man. Yeah. We want to be funny, yes. We want to make this, like, not too serious, man. Like, mm -hmm. this is just be having fun, bro. But, yeah, we don't giggle that much. I know. We I want to I wanna hear some, like, yeah. I want to get some, like, real... <laughs> like deep <laughs> chest laughs going yeah, yeah. like so we both have to work, yeah. work on our comedy so my next goal for the next episode is to get you to laugh at least little two or once. three times okay, two or three times yes like a, a solid genuine <laughs> laugh not okay. like a little fake like laugh like, ha ha ha, ha, yeah. ha, ha. <laughs> okay I think All right. we can see you next week yes next week, yeah. take care have an awesome ha. week good night peace out